Hey there folks and welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this video shortly after its release, I hope you had a fantastic holiday period. And on the 22nd of December, the team at the Indie Stone dropped a Thursdoid for us, giving us some details on the current development efforts of Project Zomboid. Now, disclaimer, this isn't a huge post and I assume that's because it was on the run up to Christmas. So this video might not be the longest in the world, but I wanted to make sure you guys got everything covered regardless. If you find the video useful, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more tips, guides, and gameplay. So, the first thing mentioned in this post from the developers is the Steam Awards. Project Zomboid has found itself in the final nominees for the Labour of Love Award, alongside games like Deep Rock Galactic, No Man's Sky, and Cyberpunk 2077. So they've got stiff competition. Still, it's awesome to see a game that I've been passionate about for a while get a shot at the award, so if you want to help them take home the win, I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can cast your vote. Of course, the devs are very thankful, and pass on that thanks to the community for all the nominations they've received, which ultimately led them up to this point. Awesome stuff. All right, so let's get into the actual development info. A lot of the devs are away on Christmas break at the time of the blog article being written. However, there is still some stuff for us to share. In preparation for real actor recorded body sounds, things like physical exertion sounds when climbing or pushing things, Matteo has recorded his own voice to get a feel for what might be required. The idea is to keep them subtle to match the perspective and consideration that the player doesn't want to be heard by zombies in the nearby area. So right now, they aren't too over the top. The devs mentioned they might want to change their approach with this in the future, but it's interesting for them in the meantime to consider the audio and what it could bring to the game in the way of immersion. We got a couple of video clips for this one, so I'll let those play for you guys now. And once again, keep in mind these aren't from a professional voice actor and for now are just a proof of concept. They are not final. So that's it for audio, but I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of this particular feature in the comments, so let me know. Moving on from this is optimization and basements, both the kind that are placed by mappers and the kind that are randomly generated on server start. Right now the developers are working on getting the build including these features into a testable state so that it can be poked and prodded at by beta testers for QA purposes. Right now it's an ongoing process, but the devs make note that a lot of progress has been made towards this axe aspect of development in the last week that's left them feeling rather excited about the whole thing. Integration of the new Fire FX is coming along nicely, with most of the dev's current attention being focused on making flames fit the scene. A new VFX artist will be joining the team for a short while in the new year to help with this, so in the meantime, the team are experimenting with different code and have promised us some more videos closer to when they feel the finished article is ready to go, so we might see some scenes of new Fire FX in action in the not too distant future. As covered in the last dev blog, Blair is working on a whole host of things at the moment, but is currently very pleased with some work on a loot log, which he's asked to be advertised in this dev blog for the benefit of modders. This is essentially a dev and modding tool that once activated, logs every item that spawns around the player, rather than waiting for the player to find them via gameplay. Info that is logged using this tool includes a list of items, the room definition of where said loot has spawned, the container type that it has spawned in, and the coordinates of said item. Whilst this might not affect your average player directly, I want to take this opportunity to highlight how big of a help this could be. We've all played on modded maps in the past, or hosted servers with them, where the loot spawns haven't really adhered to what we thought they would, or have spawned items incorrectly. This should help knock those instances out of existence in future, and stop a good map being ruined by bad loot spawns. Alongside this, Blair has also been working with the 
improved profession houses that can spawn loot related to a certain skill like electrical or mechanics. The plan is for these houses to have cars, new weapons, new zombie stories, and filler book items that might match the profession the house has been allocated. It should help with environmental storytelling and makes the world feel a little bit more fleshed out. There's also some more 3D items and all sorts of new foods on the way from Blair, although it's not hinted at what kinds we can expect in this blog post at all. On RJ's side of things, animals have entered initial testing, which is incredibly exciting to hear. The devs note that it made for some fun first day bugs as well as a lot of cooing over cute baby animals from testers. They note that it's incredible what life non-human and non-zombie animated creatures suddenly bring to Project Zomboid when you encounter them. So I'm looking forward to experiencing that for myself, as I'm sure many of you guys are too. There's a couple of fun bugs that are included in the blog post itself, including this image of chickens that started with just five chicken eggs placed on a wooden floor. This resulted in a house full of roosters. Chickens apparently also learned to open doors, and a second image shows a piglet horde that was spawned by their incredibly fast breeding rate. So there's some tweaking and fixes to be applied, but hopefully things are at least on track for the developers, and there's no mention of any impacts on performance in the dev post, which is good news, I suppose. So that's it from me in this one, short and sweet, I'd say, definitely. But I'll leave you with this final image shared in the blog post of cows in a strip club. No reason other than I just thought I should include it because it's brilliant. A huge thank you to all of my patrons for their ongoing support for my content and for joining me on our whitelisted Project Zomboid server as well. There's a link in the description if you want to join them. Thanks folks, and I will see you all in the next one.